so guys one that shall never end in nigeria because every day by day we we see things as amazing things that will be shocked that happened so after the military threatened to buy the kuba he have always come out to expose some little truth about the government president the military and so on so in this video again he came out to say that he's going to expose every single thing and then he even told the government that they should release them the canon since they failed to protect lives and he said that you must continue to expose these people like i keep on saying this that one day the truth must come i think i'd like you guys to hear what um Dukuba Asari have to say about this issue of not and i'll see you guys in a minute carry their boat come i mean see them then catch them then flog them see they are gone it don't happen where well, well. we don't settle matter where well, well for river you don't go there and say what did they happen now huh? why are they do this thing i mean flog them Civil defense or guy will be uh, a carry star full for anybody. One Korofo will not carry anything. Go flog him. Because he, 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 because with the fear thing go do cool. These are the things happening. That's the reality that people don't want to hear. The people who hear it. I think they said they were gonna kill me. Now I don't ready for them. Make them come kill me. If them fit. <laughs> the world will know every details of the atrocities against Nigerian people. This is just the beginning, no? This is just the beginning. Until they are called to order. Until they are called to order. Until they start to behave like, like others behave in civilized society. Not like the ones where they kill innocent children and women and other people. They destroy people's house. If we cannot provide, protect the people, allow him and the candle to come out. Not because of one man, that hundreds of people will be killed every day. Allow him to come out. It's as simple as that. The life of these people are more precious, more important than keeping in and the candle in the place. And you do not have the the, 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 the the power, the strength, the wherewithal to provide security for the people. You are not lucky talking of property. You are not talking of, you don't have. It's as simple as that. Um, it's shocking that you see that um, the Kuba Asari came out to speak out for Namekano. Like, it's so, so, so amazing to even hear that him, him is coming out to speak for Namekano that the government should leave the country since they failed to protect the life of citizens. That the life of citizens is more precious than keeping the country in custody. But I think I like guys, there's more videos again, more interesting oneself to watch about um, this Yibos and the Kano. I think I like guys to watch that video. But at the end, I would love you guys to uh, comment in the comment section. If you're new here, my channel, you can subscribe and like my videos. I'll see you guys as you watch this video. I haven't said that on the from the aspect of management of resources both human resources and fiscal resources, which is money, I will put it a bit on the part of the state governors. Because, for instance, you see, um, if you do one thing, it can, have a, it, can, it can have a multiplier effect. Look at Abba now. I've been to Abba many years ago, many, many years ago. What is stopping Abba from being an industrial hub? You don't expect, ideally, like in a country like Nigeria, with the real or perceived marginalization against the Igbos, you wouldn't expect that when the Yorubas and the Aousas, or if you like, the Aousa Fulanis, as we have it now, when they are rotating power amongst themselves, and there's this ethnic suspicion that one day, you guys might say, you want to go. You ordinarily won't expect that they would want to do much in terms of building the Southeast industrially. Then it now boils down on the state governors to make sure that these things are being done in such a way that the Southeast will naturally evolve industrially, in such a way that the Southeast will not only feed the Nigerian market, but also the Togo market, the, the Ghana market, the, the Côte d'Ivoire market. The Southeast have the ability. So I will put that on the, the state government. So, Dr. Reggie, let's walk a, a bit back to oh. history, you know. This agitation that is very intense now, you, you know, by the, when Obasanjo was in, in government, when Yeradwa was in government, 
uh, even when Jonathan was in government, it wasn't as intense as, as it is now. Like Prince said, it was Masop. You know, Ms. Rico was driving a Masop agenda, you know. My people need to, movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra. If, uh, by, uh, as a 2013, Nam Dikano was not even campaigning for the South East to, exist, to exit Nigeria. He was asking questions, how do we make this country a better place for everybody? Can't we sit down at a round table and, and renegotiate this union? So it was when a certain government came into power. The Buhari government. The Buhari government and excluded the South East. Clearly. That was when the agitation took, you gravitated towards violence and all of that. And the government, instead of, okay, let me not even answer the question for you. The point of it is this. This present administration is continuing in that direction of the Buhari government. So don't you think that the federal government still holds the ace towards the resolution of this crisis? Okay, I'll pick it from two sides. First, the part of the federal government, then that of Nnamdi Kano. First, for the federal government, um, I've asserted before that for me, uh, the Buhari government committed what I can call an unforgivable sin. What do I mean by that? If Buhari were to be a Kingsley Mongalu, if it were to be an Omoyele Shoure, or any of these, you know, um, to, to use the word in hip hop, new cats, you know, if it were to be any of these new cats, it would have been forgiven that, oh, Shoure is, is, not, is not experienced when it comes to leadership at that kind of level. So that, that, that's why his reasoning and his attitude is so sectional. But for a Buhari, that has ruled this country as a military head of state, that has worked in an organization whereby you cannot avoid interacting with people from other ethnic groups, like the military. The military issue. Okay. So the thing is, one of the solutions is don't come to the table with greed. I'm a Yuba well, man. I'm a Yuba man. I'm sorry, I have to say this. I'm a Yuba man. But I think that other ethnic groups have been largely greedy, including the Yorubas, since then. Okay. The All reason right. why I say so is that now, there are three, except my, my secondary school <coughs> teachers are wrong, right? They say there are three major ethnic groups. But if you look at it, since that um, coup that happened in the, is it 1963 or something? 66. Now, that particular coup, you will see that the Yorubas and the Aufulanis have been so greedy that they've been rotating in among themselves. Now, Tinumbu, if you use maybe eight years, at the end of the day, if he's leaving, even before he leaves, they are powerful and they are already hungry for the power, as if it's their bad tribe. Immediately, they are powerful and are leaving. The Yorubas are already, you know, are already roaring like lion, roaring like thunder, All you right. know, to grab the power. Then you ask yourself, what happens to the South? If you look at it now, sorry, sir. Right. If you look at it now, in, in Nigeria, if you begin to rank it, mm. <coughs> the Igbos that are the third largest ethnic group are not well represented. The president, okay, number one. Vice president, number two. Senate right. president, number three. Speak of that, sovereign, number four. Okay. All right, then. Um, let's, let me come to the prince now. Prince, you're shaking your, your head. Is that disbelief or... No, well, well, let's, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm shaking my head because each time we talk about this thing about the Southeast, mm. I get very emotional because I'm a Southeast now. But I get, my emotion goes to the fact that Everything anybody is saying about the federal government still does not resonate. It boils down to what do the Igbos themselves want? That's you have I'm governors in the southeast. That's where I'm. You have governors who have been receiving money now, from the federal. Let me, let me ask why you. Why are they not developing the southeast? Let me ask you. Sorry, this. I'm coming. That's exactly why, no, no, no. Um, that's exactly where I'm coming to. The governors, the southeasterners, the governors. You know why haven't they? Because we see a situation whereby. A governor comes out and says, look, uh, I want to align with the center so my people can enjoy the benefits of democracy. We hear of that. But when it comes to development, is it, is, is, is it a question of greed? When it comes to the agitation, when it comes to the release of Mazin Namdi Kakanu, is it, is it a, a situation of aligning with the center or a situation of greed? What exactly is playing out. Let's, let's make sense of it. Let me, let me start by saying that power is not given. Power is taken. So you need to snatch it and run. No, no. Definitely. Okay. Power is not given. Let us, let us align to that. Secondly, when you get the power, you either use it to the benefit of the people or you use it for your own selfish ends. 
What has continued to play out in the South is other than the late Sabu Mbakwe of blessed memory, who else in the Southeast as a governor has developed and has done anything meaningful in the Southeast? Mention one governor. So basically, the Southeasterners that they represent are, the, the governor, people as they, governors do not even cost, want development they in are the, the problem. area. Now, when you say you want to align with the federal government, or you want to align with the power for the benefit of your people, in all these alignments, what development have they brought? And that brings me back again so to... I'm coming. You know. When Mbakemon, the governor of Enable State, and he said he wants to end sit at home, that people should come out. If you don't come out, he will demolish your shop. And, and I said, this man is not serious. He doesn't understand what is at play. Why is it that the Southeast governors are not sitting down? With all the senators, with all the representatives, with all the elders and chiefs and aces, why have they not sat down to ask themselves, what is the core problem? Does that have anything to do with the disposition or the perceived disposition of, of the Igbo man as proudful? Well, let's say, you know, there is this saying about the Igbos, where what is it? The Igbos have no king. Mm. But we have, we have outlived that. Have we? Yes, we have. Because now the Igbos negotiate. They discuss. But unfortunately, in all these discussions, it's not about the survival of the ordinary Igbo man. It's about the survival of a few. We saw what Rochas did in Imo State. Using the state's funds to build statues. So are what you now kind of, saying? What kind of stupidity are you is now that saying? As a if, governor, are you now saying going by everything we have seen and the fact that those that are politicians within the, within the southeast doesn't they don't seem to be representing the people rights? If and probably when the state of Biafra is 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 uh, given, will we see any anything different? <laughs> Those agitating for Biafra, are they not Igbos? Those that eventually, if there is Biafra, that will oversee the affairs of Biafra, are they going to import people from the moon? Those governing the South East are Igbos. Those governing the South East right now are Igbos. Charity no. begins from At home. home. So for me, as an Igbo man, let me put it clearly, for me as an Igbo man, it's not about Biafra. Okay. It's about the development of the South. So that brings me to this question. Let me, finish. Ask, no, no, please, please. Sorry, let me finish. Let me finish. A few years back, I, I belonged to an organization known as Imo Network Group. Okay. We went to Umaya to visit Nandikam just before his home was run, you know, last, last Saturday and all of that. And we were very clear. I, as an Igbo man, I believe that if the, the Southeasterners will come together and adopt what I call 24 years development plan. plan okay which was what we gave to him we said like like dr dr, dr. moshola said we asked him let us take I, uh, the whole of ipop and one over abga okay and have abga as a party for the southeast okay pre, pre, the you know what no, you do know what would have happened what would have happened is that by now you probably have about seven states under abga okay and that gives them the strength to negotiate and that gives the Igbo man the strength to come to the federal and say, this is what we want. Exactly. Now, look at, no, hold on, look at Lagos State. Let's go back to the two former governors, Fashola and Ambode. They set the standard for the development of the state. Go back to the Southeast. What do you have in Emo State? Prince, what do you have in Enugu State? Prince, what do you have? Prince, I'm coming. Please hold on. I'm having a talk. Let me finish. My talk. Let me finish. Now. now, when Mba came out and said, Stop Monday sit at home, he did provide security for those he's asking to come out. Oh, yes, he did. Well, how, come it, how come that when the unknown government will come out to strike, you will not see the presence of security? What is going on? It simply shows you that it's either the governors themselves are the beneficiary of this seat at home All right. or the local okay. chiefs. Okay, Pr Prince, uh, you said something about negotiation, that Igbo should negotiate. You also said that uh, power is not given, that it is taken. I have two questions for you. One, who did Jonathan take power or was it given to him? 
That is one. Two, when you talk about, I don't you think that these problems are layered? Clearly, the state governors have their responsibilities, which they have failed, according to you. A lot of people will agree with you. But on the other side, on the other hand, don't you think that the federal government is also driving the marginalization? This present administration is constructing a Lagos Calabar coastal highway, flagged off under construction. The same government is constructing a Badagri Sokoto highway, flagged off under construction. These two super highways cut across more than 18 states of the Federation. Buhari built rail lines across the length and breadth of this country. South has got only 50, 40 kilometers. Do you hold the governors responsible for not building a coastal highway that didn't cut through the southeast? A coastal a super highway that didn't cut through the southeast from Badagri to Sokoto? Is it the problem of the governors or is it a national problem? I don't even want to talk about appointments in the commanding heights, both under Buhari and this present administration, where the southeast has been clearly excluded. Um, Mr. Koro, personally, I do not believe in this federal government as an Igbo man. I will not hold federal government responsible for what's happening in the southeast. I will hold my governors responsible. If the federal government has decided not to build rail lines in, in, the, in the southeast, why are your governors not coming together to build rail lines con connecting the entire southeast? Rail Don't they have the money? Rail lines were only decentralized just about a year ago. It doesn't matter. Since a year ago, what have they done? How many, Even how many, how many states have Kolo built Kanda. in the south? How many Kolo, states please, have Mr. built Kolo rail Kolo lines? Even the road network in the southeast, how many of them are working? I say the problems are layered. No, how many of them are working? Maybe you should take a trip to the south. Okay, how many federal well, roads in the south listen, are working? You see, when we had problems with federal roads in Lagos, I remember the governors then fixed the votes and sent the bill to the federal government. The federal government paid back. Under who's, Why are under the South administration? It doesn't matter. A debt is a debt. Why are the Southeast governors not thinking out of the box? Why are they not thinking out of the box? And that, be, that, will now bring me, that will bring me to this question, Prince Chilaka. You know, you've been talking about the state governments or the people in the Southeast, the governors in the Southeast not doing what they ought to have done for their people. And then I want to ask, who is really benefiting from the insecurity in the South? Is because, for example, we also had uh, during the time of uh, Namdi Khan's broadcast, he made mention of uh, how the South Easterners, how the big wigs in the South East are actually part of the people, part of the challenge, the problems that they are having. And that is what Ima Powerful talk to be how politicians of the South East turn their back, you know, towards his release or his freedom. Now, we have someone coming up to say, sit at home in the South East must happen. Whereas Namdekano have said, there's no more sit at home. Ima Powerful also happens to be the IPOB spokesperson says, we are not the ones giving the sit at home order because we cannot kill the people that we are agitating freedom for. They have also pointed out saying that some people are benefiting from the sit at home order and the unrest in the Southeast. So Mr. or Prince Chilaka, I will ask you, you're smiling already. Who are the benefactors or who are the people benefiting from the sit at home or the arrest in the southeast? The governors are beneficiaries, every one of them. They cannot deny it. Even the ones do saying you know, that it's that issue. You, you, know you, know you know that every month they collect security vote. Also, there's a money, there's a particular amount that is given to states that are troubled in terms of security. Where are they applying those funds? The political class in the Southeast are responsible for the unrest in the Southeast. Because when it is time for election, they bring out guns and hand over to their thugs. Do they get to collect it back after the elections? What is happening in the Northeast today? We all know how it started. It's a political class. You cannot, you cannot in any way exonerate the political class from what is happening. Is it the ordinary poor man on the street trying to survive by the day? Is it the one that is financing such 
Okay. Madness. All right. Because so of, does he have the kind of money to do that? Well, big questions. Uh, but because of time, let's let's quickly touch on the involvement of another individual who is um, who has declared uh, uh, Biafra in exile. I'm talking about Simon Ekbana. His name was mentioned not too long ago by my colleague here. Um, Simon Ekbana has consistently called for uh, agitation in the southeast, even when uh, you know, um, Namdi Kano has dissociated himself from some of the agitation in the southeast. Nigerians, you know, have said, look, and then words, words that one can consider derogatory, are constantly being put out on, uh, you know, the different uh, media that he uses. And uh, Nigerians have said, look, bring this person home. Now, I do understand that we may not have an um, uh, extradition treaty with, um, um, with, with a Finnish um, government. But what is, according to you now, what do you think his interests are? Some have even said that he may be sponsored by certain individuals in government to ensure that insecurity persists in the Southeast as that will affect elections. Because we see you know, cases where elections are to be held, you t elections that will ordinarily put people in power, help them decide on who will govern or, or their person of interest be in power, and you say people must not come out to vote. Is that in the interest of the people? Okay. Um, <coughs> let me quickly touch on um, a question he asked that. Who oh, is, go ahead. Who is benefiting from this um, seat at home in the southeast? Um, number one, the non-state actors, you see, this sit at home, to my mind, started as a solidarity that, oh, why would you um, arrest Namdi Kanu? You know, is it because he's vocal? Is it because he wants something good for his people? If that be the case, um, we will sit at home every Monday to express our interest, so it, to, to express our dissatisfaction. So it started as a solidarity movement. But then, these non-state actors began to realize that, oh, so we can truly, you know, declare sit at home. So that means that we have so much power. And they started profiting from it, and by the way of profiting from it, it came to stay. If you ask me again that, who is profiting from it? I can say the federal government. You ask me how. The federal government is largely dominated by the Yorubas and the Awusa Fulanese, right? Now, if the Yorubas and Fulanese want to keep rotating power among themselves, number one, if there's no peace in your area, it helps them. Number two, if um, you are not as financially stable as you should be, it helps them. You know, so if they don't want you in power and your source of wealth, you are declaring sit at home to kind of like, you say, okay, people should sit at home. So yes, those at the federal it's level, those that, if, those that the federal level that stands to benefit from it will keep it like that, but they will just manage the situation in such a way that it doesn't lead to a total breakdown of break law, law and order or threaten the corporate existence of Nigeria. I'll give you an example. The case of bandits, for instance. The bandits are there. They are operating. But when they are going overboard and it begins to kind of like be like it wants to threaten the corporate existence of Nigeria, government will react. But after a while, government will pipe down. Why don't you react fully to nip it in the bud fully? So the, 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 the federal government itself, that is largely dominated by the Yorubas and the Awusa Fulanese, you know, the, 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 the lack of peace, the lack of coherence, if you look at it, it's to their own benefit. If there is peace in the southeast, you would think, oh, you want to come up with a with a united something, or you want to you, you want to align with one political party or form an alliance. But if there is no peace, then that may be difficult itself. And now there are like four different kind of political voices, or you know, or, or if you, I don't want to say leadership voices. There are four kind of factions that you can either align with one, or two, or three, or all. Number one, that of Unam Dikanu. Because Unam Dikanu has stayed long in detention, he's, he, he's beginning to lose steam to some extent. 
<laughs> you have <coughs> sorry. sorry Simon Epa, which also have his own followers. You have Peter Obi, who is being seen as the political leader now of the Southeast. So you you not have to imagine that okay, this Southeast, where do we really go? You see people that they are supporting the Namdi Kanu that okay, free Namdi Kanu, we won't be Afra. You also see those people during the election, they will say, Oh, we want to go and vote for Peter Obi. You will see the same people who say, Why should you extradite um, Simon Epa? So there is confusion all over the place, except for the Igbo ruling elite that are profiting from the corporate existence of Nigeria. That the corporate of an Igbo man that has built businesses, for instance, all Jews of Kalu, for instance, we not pray that Nigeria should disintegrate. Because why? He has built businesses across the length and breadth of Nigeria. So the Biafra agitation is mainly for the, the, the Talakawas, the Mekunus, the half not or the middle class of the Southeast. But the, 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 the people that are feeling the pain or the people that can make that happen, they won't want it to happen because it will affect them, it will affect their interests. And that's why you see that in Amrikanu is not being released. Because they will think that, oh, the people that can fight for him, People that can speak on his behalf, just as the Yoruba kings, the Yoruba political elite spoke in favor of Sunday. But sometimes, when you walk through life, when you pass through life, if you have not passed through life to such an in, to such an extent that you need some people to speak for you apart from yourself, then you haven't passed through life. But when you get to that eighth stage, if you don't have somebody to speak for you, then you'll be in problem. One of the problems in Amdi is facing is not because he has committed any crime that has never been committed in Nigeria before. Mm -hmm. Secession in Nigeria started way back in the 1960s during the days of Isaac and Akaburu. So, Namdi Kanu is not, is not new. Or the, um, this this uh, Odume Gojuku, he did it, you know, Sunday go and a host of others. But the truth is, those that can advocate for his release right now are people that are benefiting from... You would think that they are divided. When these people, when they meet with, with the president, they are beginning saying, oh... But well, the likes of the late Iwanyan who advocated, he, uh, people like that spoke, something, uh, spoke out. These are people the of late influence as well. Yes. The late, the late Iwanyan is respected. But those that can speak now, right now, are the people that are, have the political power so, right so now. The governors, the governors in the southeast have gone to see, to see the... the uh, to, to see the president in this disregard, you know, do you think do you think it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's just a show off? I think I think um, there is no serious dimension to it in the sense that, for instance, when the president was campaigning and he went to the southeast, what was the point of dialogue of the southeast people? Okay, Buhari marginalized. Buhari, okay, you want to say unjustly detained in Amdikan? It's okay. But when the Emiloko was campaigning, what was the Igbo's point of negotiation as an ethnic group? The Igbo leaders, the Opus or Dima, the, you know, a host of them, what was their point of negotiation with, um, let's say, Peter Obi is their own, with Atiku Abubakar and, some, and this continued detention of an American, of course, you cannot exclude the um, leadership structure in the country. For instance, right. for instance, if the Igbos are being given a fair opportunity to be president, one, it will doubt this tension. Two, no matter how long it takes, an Igbo man will come there and also release his own people. But Dr. Dixie, sorry, sorry, ma'am, sorry, ma'am, sorry, ma'am. Some people Just from as, the sorry, I need to say this. Just as Buhari went all after Sunday, but I met Inumbu, came there, he piped down. So if Buhari went after Namdi Kanu, but Ahmed Tinumbu has failed to release him, if there is no greed in the political structure of Nigeria, if, let's say, the president now is Peter Obi, maybe he would have also released Namdi Kanu. So that's why I said that you can't rule away the import of political power. And you have leaders now that they are mainly advocating for themselves in the Southeast. You understand? So if okay. they make it a point of pressure, that this is what we want. Well, I'm at Inumbu, we give it to them. Releasing the Namdekanu is not really his problem. So, we've heard it now, um, from Doba Atariya, from that video I played, that if they want peace to end this country, they should not be because 
Now they can't be the cost of this cost more harm than good. I keep on saying it and I keep on repeating it. Till the government wakes up to the need for now the car no insecurity will keep on looming Nigerian. And I think we need to wake up and speak the truth. And thank God that the government said they have come out because they've been threatening to buy him. Now he has tired said that okay, since what to buy me, let me start exposing every single things that people are doing. And then he started exposing the government. He started exposing them. Saying to one more of things that because he has a lot to say about the government and then the military because they've worked together before, so he, they are so many secrets that he will soon review. And I think they should get it because Togba is not ready to give quiet right now because he has been dressing up and down that he will hide. So now he's saying that he must confess and expose everything. So I think if you have watched the video, and I think I'll like to get your views in the comment section. I'll see you guys in my next video. Stay tuned, guys.